evening. Welcome. Late at night. A little cold out here. Do you find you never have enough time to do all the things that you want to do? I've only just arrived. I wanted to have a pee, but still, never mind. We're on and uh, we're cooking tonight. We've got a live satellite link. I'll do that again. We've got a live satellite link. It's cold out here uh, with America and SeaWorld in San Diego. Lindsay Kemp is our special guest on the programme and uh, we'll be doing some mime. We have Cookie Baz, Bamming Boy is back. We have the competition. We have some music for you. Excuse me, this is my show. Why is it? Whenever somebody's doing television in this country, there's some pillock has to make funny faces behind them. Why? Roll the titles. just a minute before I do anything because I've just my shoes have come up do you know it's terrible isn't it when you haven't got enough time in the day to do quite nice shoes you like this to do everything that you want to do a bit a bit effeminate I know but there we are uh, you can't actually you can't actually get it together but I think I'm ready now so we go in we stand behind the uh, curtains here this is the the new on the James Whale show you see we have all the guests come in through this and as soon as the guests come through this at home you can uh, jump around on your beds your sofas throw the beer cans in the air and uh, applaud like the audience will do now so Not only, not only to see you there, I'll go back up I think, not only to see you there at home but also here in the audience. It's lovely to have you with us on the James Whale Show tonight. Packed, absolutely packed full of everything. So please, for those of you who were thinking about hypnotism, look what can happen. Here's Blue Motif. Experience a warm wave of magnetic relaxation energy throughout your whole body from the top of your head to your buttocks and on to the soles of your feet. I want you to mentalize or imagine you are at a party the kind of party you usually spend hiding in the bathroom. But now you're looking great and full of warm, soothing, magnetic relaxation energy. Hey, look over there. Wow. Boy, do you have great taste. Call her over. Staying with your warm, soothing, magnetic, relaxation energy. Take her in your arms.
fact, you uh, you take up one of those uh, courses at home, just be very, very careful. Do you like my new horn, by the way? We lost the other one. It doesn't quite have the same effect as the other one we had, does it? It's sort of miserable, really. Now, uh, I think it's time to uh, have our little ratings raise, and uh, all TV programmes, of course, are very concerned about the ratings, how much you enjoy it, how many people actually watch it. And we have found, when we do this next item, that the ratings go right up, so we make no excuse for it. This is purely to raise the ratings of the programme. Ladies and gentlemen, with the competition, as always, here's Cookie! <laughs> I've heard of hogging, but please, come up here, come up here. Now, lots of letters. We've had lots of letters about you. None of them, by the way, will she comply with not one. Isn't that right? I'm certainly yeah, 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 yeah. Nice ones I'll reply to. No, you yeah. won't. They're smutty ones. Mm. No, none of them. Well, most of them are smutty. And do you, <laughs> do you wonder? Do you wonder? Just a moment. Hayes, come here. Come here. Have you been? Have, ha, have you got a note? Like what? Yes, have you got a note? Yes, yes. roasted chestnuts. Roasted. It's cold out there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yes. At this time of the morning, somebody's saying... Yeah. Go and change now and hurry up, because okay. we have missed you. Off you go. Right, thank you very much indeed. Yes. Now... Yes, yes, I know. Yeah, Michael, please, this is the... Michael... Tristram is our new floor manager tonight, OK? He Tristram, like he's not from public lovely, school, but he's very polite. This is Cookie, all right? All right. Yeah, he, you like him, do you? Lo I, do. I should hold the microphone up here, shouldn't <laughs> yeah. I? Fine. Well, keep an eye on him. What do you want to hold that for? I thought you were giving no, it no, to me. No, 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 no. Should we do the competition? Yeah, late, OK, late, late. open it up. Here we are. You hold this. You hold that. There right. we are. You okay. just model. That's it. Right. That's it. OK. Uh, the winner, a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, a competition and we gave you a... What are you doing? I'm just... Well, don't, because, you know, they'll start talking about us. A competition to go to Crete for a week or so. Okay. John Davis from Kidlington in Oxfordshire. Okay. Well done. Well done. You're off to... What a straight... Isn't it? It's like being on a firing squad here, isn't it? Look, they're all, all surrounded, really. I don't think it's got anything to do with me. Should I get out of the shot? I'll just read it and you carry on. I mean... OK, right. <clears throat> the competition. This week's competition, you have to get to the phones. And is Cookie going to be on the other end of the phone? Who knows? 0891 48 49 50. The question... Which of the Marx Brothers, you remember the Marx Brothers? I do. Of course. Only just. Only just. Was, I do remember You do, because I you do. were born... What were you born? 1948. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the Marx Brothers... Were, <laughs> which of the Marx Brothers was best known for playing his harp? Was it... Groucho. Or Chico. Or oh, Harpo. Harpo. Difficult one, that. Uh, 0891 48 49 50. And you can ring that number until midnight on Sunday. <laughs> Very nice, guys. What a... <clears throat> it's very... It's very... The only thing I like about television is the fact that you get to see what your clothes look like from the back. Um, well, there are a few other things, but that's one of the main things. Hang on just a moment, over here. You right, Baz? Nice to have you back. Hi. What are you doing with Cookie round there? <laughs> I'm, we're, just I'm, I'm just <laughs> we're just discussing oh, her, oh, just discussing her oh, tights. Oh, oh. Yeah. We'll see you later. <laughs> By the way, what... Excuse me about this. What's in the bag? It's a present for you, James. Oh, right, okay. now you spot OK, OK, OK. <laughs> no, I, I like surprises, so I don't want to know. Right. He's, wait, he's waiting in the wings. We don't know if it'll fit you, of course. But no, of course it probably won't. That's very nice up there. More whales and dolphins, because we Might do be have our, our satellite... What? Okay. That's good. Are you all right? Do think you should get your hair cut, because it's like really taking the piss, isn't it, really, when you think about it? Uh, you carry on. Right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Let's have the fanfare as well. Coming through the door, it's Baz Banning Boy! <laughs> James. Your Royal, Your Royal Holiness. Please, on no, your knees. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Oh, that's it, that's the way I not like only, it. Not only Where's do we have... Where's my handmaiden? Well, I beg your pardon. <laughs> uh, not, only, not only do we have MPs on this programme, but we have royalty as well in Prince Bamming Boy. <laughs> James, I don't know if this is too... It's a, it's a while, by the way. It's not. Is what, it? Oh, right, it yeah. may look like something else. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you can squeeze that at night. Oh, thank you very. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? It's rather good. Uh, I think perhaps I ought. To, what, do you, what do you think up in the uh, in the box? Do you like that? It's, it, it's quite nice, isn't it? Really? It looks as yeah. stupid as I expected. Does it inflate or not? 
Do you need batteries to we'll go in it? We'll discuss it afterwards. Really? <laughs> That's right. It's rather lovely. I think I'll put it just for the moment there, OK, in private place, on the world, on top of the world. OK, pushing on with the uh, the movies, you've been... Oh, one thing, one yes. thing. I noticed that I was one of the major celebrities yes. not invited to the first night of the new Frankenstein vampire um, thing we bought. You know, with... Um, I always um, the vampire with Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, yeah. Yes. I mean, uh, some, some prat went in a skirt, but I noticed that I wasn't invited. How did you I... go? I'd, I'd already seen it, actually. I did go... Just to be seen? Just to be seen, then I left again, because I've seen the movie twice, and twice is more than enough. James, it's a lovely-looking movie, but please, you've missed nothing. Have I not? I'll be as okay. nice as that. Well, next time you get a big glitzy Not that it's affair, awful, Could but you it's... invite me? Yeah, of course. Okay. So you can come under my kill. Good. <laughs> um, right. As we're running out of time rapidly here, as usual, uh, one clip, which do you think will be nicest? Uh, let's do Only You. Why? Tell me about well, it. Well, Only You, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lovely romantic film with Marissa Tomei in a kind of role that Audrey Hepburn would have played. She is obsessed with this guy called Damon Bradley. She is... This is the name of a guy she heard when she was a kid at school from a Ouija board. Damon Bradley. This is the guy she's destined to marry. Right. Oh, there's a, there's a bit here. Brochure this this is yeah. the guy she's yeah. destined to marry, but the point is, he doesn't really exist. I've given too much away already, haven't I? You have. Shall we see the clip? Yeah, let's see, let's the, see clip. the clip. Okay. Now, but maybe someday we can all get together. Uh, well, I think. <laughs> so, that, that was. <laughs> So, yes, yeah, she's just about to marry a chiropodist, actually. Ah, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's waiting at the church, but she goes off to, to Venice, Rome, Positano with a girlfriend... Have you, I've been ..looking for Damon Brennan. Have you ever been there? I have. It's a beautiful... It's wonderful. I tell you, the one... The buses what, don't run on time. Were, That's just one of the problems. One of the reasons for seeing this film is it's, it's beautifully shot. I mean, it's a little sweet at times. It could do with a little twist of lemon. And it's only for you if you're in the right kind of mood and a forgiving one. Because mm. it kind of doesn't always work... But I saw it twice, and I have to tell you, as daft as it is, it kind of made me cry. Not a lot it's of kind violence. Of, no violence, right. it's just a gentle romantic movie. Take your wife. Go with the one you love, James. Ladies and gentlemen. Go with the one you love. Mr Baz Bamming Boy. Thank you. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Difficult, difficult. Great. Thanks for the presents. Pleasure. Thanks for the presents. Pleasure. Hang on. What have you got there? What was... It's, no, no, come on. Nice, yeah, let's have a, a look. I noticed off-camera you were reading it. Why should you get mail? It's a letter from Lucy. From who? Lucy, you know, who works on the programme. Yes. And it says love and it's a kiss. Do you know no, that's, that's not Lucy. Lucy. Show it's everybody... Lucy. Look at this. It's He's Lucy. reading this. Somebody sent him a card. It's nice. It's Lucy. See that? Fine. Thank you very much. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, here's a, a band called It, and they're singing. Uh, Is there anybody out there? Come with me and talk about this. <laughs>
And who knows? Uh, right, to the break with the... Uh, what did you want? I just want to quickly say Barcelona also opens today. Barcelona. Wonderful movie, Americans in Spain, brilliant film. And also, only you, Louis Armstrong, sings a title track and it's heaven. See you next week. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Uh, right, what was I going to say? Oh, yes, uh, Lindsay Kemp coming up. And before the break, which of the Marx Brothers was best known for his harp playing? Was it Groucho, Chico or Harpo? You can ring us on 0891 48 49 50. The phone lines are open until midnight on Sunday. Come back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, this is really, I need the bigger one that we had a few weeks ago because it's just, I don't like the sound of it. Anyway, <laughs> Baz, behave yourself. My next guest is um, a, a giant among men, a man who has influenced an enormous amount of stars today. Kate Bush used to work with him and David Bowie was um, so uh, taken with him that he joined his group and that uh, this gentleman actually then uh, helped him create, or maybe, I'll ask him in a few moments, maybe he created himself Ziggy Stardust. Please, would you welcome the amazing Lindsay Kemp. <laughs> Lindsay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lindsay, who has another week to go at Sadler's Wells, I think, uh, doing Cinderella. Your pantomime. I thought you were going to say has another week to go. Oh no, no has another. No, no. As I've far as I know, longer Lindsay, than that, though. as far as I know, you've got longer than that to go. Before we talk about that, was I right? Was was Ziggy Stardust your creation? No, I helped considerably. It's not what I heard, Lindsay. <laughs> no, I helped. It was Dave David Bowie's idea. Mm. David Bowie came to me with the album and then asked me what I'd like to do with it, and uh, I uh, staged it. Uh, I staged it. At no. the, the Rainbow Theatre, quite some years ago, of course. And back even further than that, you, w you wanted to be a ballet dancer. You were going to be a ballet dancer. I wanted to be a ballet dancer amongst other things. I wanted to be many, many things. I'm very fortunate that I have become... Uh, many, many Most things. of them, plus a lot of things that I hoped I would never be. Anyway. Well, those might be the interesting things for us to talk about now. What, the things I didn't want to be? Yes. <laughs> Well, I can't think of any of the moment. I think I'm just too happy to be here. <laughs> what is it? I, I mean, you live in, in Italy most of the time when you're not working. Yes. You are huge I also in live Japan. there when I'm working. Oh, you, you live know, there when you're working which too, is, right? Which is most of the time. What you do is not as, as well accepted, if you like, in this country. And, and the, the people are not uh, into the sort of uh, 
shows that you put on as much as they are elsewhere. Why do you think that is? Is it because we're sort of slightly philistine or...? No, it isn't true. The critics have always been very, very much divided, but not, not the audiences. I, I remember, uh, sometimes they haven't been as large as, as I might have liked them being, but I, I, uh, I remember them always being very enthusiastic. I didn't run away from England as a lot of people would have me run away from, kicked out even from England because no one was, was, was coming to see me. It wasn't true. I just ha when I left England, I was at, uh, at the height of my, uh, of my early fame. Uh, in Flowers in the West End mm. and Flowers transferred to, to Broadway and uh, I, I just didn't come back. Why were the critics not as kind as they could have been? Well, they didn't like it. They're entitled. But they really. don't understand, do they? We should have got Baz back up here to defend himself, but I, I don't suppose he ever said anything nasty about you. Baz? Baz, yes, he's down. He's a critic, Hi, but he's, uh, he's back. Oh, he's, hello. He's, I beg your Baz. I beg your Baz. He's a critic. I know Flowers, a, a seminal work. You liked it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah most good. people did. I really don't expect uh, everyone to like what I do. You trained with Marcel Marceau as well, didn't you? Amongst others, Marcel Marceau yeah, was a great uh, influence on me, great, great help. I rather went in another direction, but I, uh, I remember him constantly. Now, people tell me that your company, when, mm. when people came to, and you had some, some wonderful names who went on to become big stars themselves, worked within your company was the most unusual company to work for. It was more like a sort of a commune in many ways. That, that you were there as the sort of the matriarchal or patriarchal figure. Yes. And, uh, and what you said was law. Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I remember it all, it was all terribly squalid, <laughs> the, the commune bit. I mean, I didn't last for very long, you know. But obviously, no one did the washing up, and everyone spent, you know, what money there was on uh, the girlfriend's <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> Tell us about Cinderella. That uh, it's, it's touring the country as well. Although you've got another week at Sadler's Wells, then you're off to Edinburgh. What what is the pantomime like? It's not like traditional <laughs> Cinderella, I'm led to believe. No, good God, <laughs> and it's not nothing like uh, the Walt Disney ghastly pasteurised version either. I mean, and it is not a, a pantomime. In the traditional sense, it's a, it's a show. It's it's an operetta. It's full of uh, surprises, but it's also full of uh, traditions. What I do, I'm not uh, an avant-garde artist. I'm often mistaken as being one, but I'm very much a traditionalist. But of course, everyone has forgotten so much of what I remember, which is the ancient theatre. You know, the theatre of uh, of ritual, of ceremony, of magic. The, the, the theatre of the Orient, the Balinese theatre, the theatre of trance, the theatre of uh, Japan, the Kabuki, the No, but also the operetta, the musical comedies, and the wonderful world of the music hall, I have kind of stolen some from people, everywhere. And everywhere. Some people, Lindsay, say, and of course, maybe it's unkind, but they do say some of it is shock value. And I believe Simon, who works on the programme, went to see you recently. And he said there's a wonderful bit mm. where the ugly sisters are trying to squeeze their, <laughs> squeeze their feet into the shoe and it doesn't fit. Mm. So they take out a knife and lop off their toes. That's <laughs> not new, is it? That's, I mean, that, the... the, 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 the uh, I'm glad that that's really, I mean, so unfamiliar. I think a lot of people will find a lot about this Cinderella very unfamiliar, but it's all the Cinderella m myth. Who do you play? That, that, that the, I'm not going to tell you. The, uh, <laughs> but I don't play Cinderella. Why don't you play Cinderella, they say? Because my foot wouldn't fit the bloody slipper, would it? How would I get no, my feet no. into that tiny no. crystal number? Um, <laughs> No, the Brothers Grimm version, of which this production knows a lot, had them chop off their, f uh, their not their feet, their, their, their toes and mm. heels. And I think they're doing it very fabulously at the, uh, the new Vic in a, another production. I shouldn't be giving them <laughs> But I've just heard so much good things about this uh, Brothers Grimm show at the, uh, do the you, new Vic. Do you feel there's a responsibility for you to be outrageous, but people, when they come to see a show, they expect Lindsay Kemp to be pretty? Oh. If I'm outrageous, it's, it's quite accidental. And if I'm <laughs> shocking, then it is certainly accidental. It has never been my endeavour to shock, but to uh, 
surprise. Lindsay, thank you very much indeed. You have certainly surprised us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lindsay Kemp. Uh, Lindsay has to dash off, he's busy, but he's saying for one minute we're just going for this week's edition of The Green Knight, QVT. Here we go. The Green Knight, of course, is trying to save the planet Earth. There's the Green Knight as he soars above the planet, ever in search of anything that's going wrong, really. And um, don't forget, he's trying to serve the, save the planet from the death ray. The alien act activates his special death ray. Yes, Tristan, get off, that's my script. Um, that's his hand turning it at the moment, and we saw that last week. Did we see that last week? Oh, no, 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 we didn't see this bit last week. There we are. The world is in diet. I don't know what that is throbbing in there. There's the Green Knight again, the savior of the world. Our hero uses his specially designed optic mirror to reflect the ray. Oh, oh well, yes, fine. Yeah, marvelous, a bit more flying. The effects of the mirror appear to be working. Oh, but not indefinitely, throb, throb. Oh, dear me, the Red Knight looks as if he's out of control, crashing towards... He's, he's gone into the ocean, down to the depths of the big sea. A giant squid! Oh, my God, the Green Knight's in for it now. The creature moves in on its prey. Oh! Will the Green Knight survive? Join us again next week and find out. Now, from uh, the Green Knight, we go to uh, music? You think music? OK, we're going to go to music. Right, ladies and gentlemen, here singing... Uh, what are they singing? Oh, lovely. When our two worlds collide... Coll well, what? Clyde, OK, right, do that again. Right, here singing, When our two worlds collide is... It! <laughs> Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen of IT and when our two worlds collide, time for the competition before the break. Cook, come on, come on, over here, please, quickly. Goodness sake. <coughs> now, for any of those, uh, okay, all right. Okay. For any of those fishermen who, uh, because of the course the uh, the EC policy means there's going to be less fish stock in the seas <laughs> around Britain, want something to do with their old nets. The, yeah. This is an idea. These, Do it quickly. These had cod in when I found them. Probably, right. yes. I wonder what the smell <laughs> was. <laughs> All right. Right, Which that. of yeah. the Marx Brothers was best known for his heart playing? Was it A, Groucho? Yes. Chico? Harpo? OK. 0891 48 49 50. 50. Phone now. Cookie, go and answer the calls. The, right. uh, the lines are open till midnight on Sunday. Come back for part three. on and uh, we got all the cameras sorted out you may remember last week we talked about the uh, family that's two is that camera Michael isn't it that one over there that's it okay fine yeah uh, we talked to Kim Wood of the Born Free Foundation we were talking about the family of killer whales that this program has adopted and during the time she was telling us about their campaign to try and free a killer whale called Corky that has been in captivity for the past 25 years at SeaWorld in San Diego. We're very lucky tonight to have uh, live via satellite from San Diego, from SeaWorld, Jim McBain, the director of the veterinary medicine, and uh, he's with us at the moment. And behind him, he's just coming up, he's just going to get, yes, and that's uh, one of your whales, Jim, behind you, just nodding to us. Thank you for talking to us. You're welcome. And uh, as we are live at the moment, and there's a little uh, delay in the satellite, we'll have to we'll take sort of uh, stock of that for each of us. First of all, this campaign, uh, does it upset you? No, I uh, recognize that it's a small number of people that uh, have taken on this particular point of view. I, it's a free country that we live in, and uh, I think that they have the right to express that opinion. I just choose to disagree with it. Now, Corky and, and a number of the other killer whales have lived with you, I believe, for quite some considerable time. I, I couldn't quite make out that question. The whales that you have with you, Jim, have lived with you for some considerable time, 25 years and sometimes more, is that right? Yes, Corky has actually been at SeaWorld since 1987. Prior to that, she lived at Marine Land uh, in uh, Central California, up in the Los Angeles area. Now, one of the main charges that we heard last week from Born Free was that whales such as Corky who are living in captivity, uh, they don't have such good life expectancy, they won't breed, uh, and, and they f fairly often miscarry as well. I think both of those uh, statements are based not on scientific fact, but on uh, emotionally based opinion. In, in fact, reproductive rates in, in uh, killer whales living in oceanariums uh, here at SeaWorld, at least, are significantly better than the reproductive rates that we would see in wild populations. Our uh, killer whales here at SeaWorld that have had live births have actually had about a 90% survival rate. In the wild, it's about a 40% survival rate at best. Now, I had the, the, the pleasure of being in a pool like that here in this country at Windsor a, a year or so ago swimming with the whale that they had there and it did seem quite content I must admit but quite often you see some horrifying pictures of, of tiny pools around the world you yourself Jim must feel concerned about the way some captive whales and dolphins are kept I don't think there's any question that uh, we we do uh, I think a, a fairly good job here at SeaWorld. We work very hard at providing a good environment. You see a large spacious habitat here. Uh, we have animals that live together in a social environment. We have actually uh, six killer whales, all uh, uh, who are able to be together and enjoy each other's company. Two of the killer whales here were actually born in Corky's presence. 
Now, they're, they're quite keen on you as well. They're quite friendly. They're swimming behind you at the moment. I don't know how close to you they are. Probably not they, as close they, as it looks. They're actually fairly close. I'm worried about the possibility of getting wet. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm rather hoping, and so is the audience, that you will get wet before the end of this. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, one of the specific charges we heard last week as well, which I'd be interested in your response to, Jim, is that you mislead the public by using the name Shamu to refer to a number of whales and thereby disguising the fatalities. Uh, it's not actually the case. Uh, we use the name Shamu as a recognition name. It's like a stage name. It's like uh, if sure. you went to see a movie about Peter Pan, or a play about Peter Pan, why a number of different people may play that part. In our case here, uh, any questions about specific, ansel, an specific animals, uh, we answer with the specific name of that animal. Each animal has sure. its own name. Jim, we're going to lose our satellite link in 30 seconds. I want to thank you for, for talking to us. One idea I had is, could we not have some kind of system where the whales, who are obviously tame, and obviously, like human company, can get out into the main ocean and come back as well, or wouldn't they work like that? I think there's a concern here, at least on my part, and I know on the part of many uh, marine mammal experts, that there would be a danger of introducing possibly uh, behavior to wild populations that may be inappropriate, and even the possibility of bringing organisms from the oceanarium environment that might be foreign. Mm -hmm in an ocean environment. Well, Jim, they look very content behind you. Just before we go, is there any possibility one can come and, um, and well, they're waving goodbye at the moment, and uh, that's, yeah, the, that's, that's very nice. These are uh, <laughs> a pretty happy bunch of animals, and this is Corky's, Corky's family you see behind me here. Well, that's lovely. Thank you very much indeed for spending some time with us and uh, give our best wishes to the whales as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim nice McBain. And our special thanks as well to uh, San Diego SeaWorld and the killer whales there. Fantastic. They look amazing. I could stay here actually and watch, and the satellite picture hasn't disappeared yet, so maybe I'll just sit and watch for a while. little music now from Catherine White, who's going to play some music. Catherine White uh, is playing a harp for you tonight, and this is a little culture, and I think you lot out there, you need some culture. And uh, the... The harp she is playing tonight apparently is worth £18,000, but they can cost as much as £30,000, so keep your hands off. And Catherine has performed for some very famous people, Sinatra, Princess Diana, Margaret Thatcher, <laughs> Jane Fonda and Danny Kaye, and the Nigel Mansell of the harp world is with us tonight. Please welcome Catherine White.
Catherine, play that bit again. Just play it. Just play it again. That little. I want to do this. I want to do this. Yeah. The thing about you know, in a man and a woman, where the two people run towards each other on the on the station. Have you, you play it. You play it. The whole thing. Yeah, right. you run over there. When she plays it, I'll cue you. Right, this will be great. See if you get a shot of this guy. I don't know what this will look like. We need a shot around the back. Now, don't follow me. Just a bit of smoke. A bit of smoke. Get a smoke gun. That's great. You carry on. Okay, fine. Carry on. Not more smoke. You see this. You know what I'm doing, huh? Where we go? That's good. That's good. Okay. That little bit where you run, Catherine, that sort of bit where you run, you know. Now, cookie. Slow motion. Slow motion, yeah. Beautiful sound of Miss Catherine White. Thank you. <laughs> that is that is lovely. Okay, we're running. We're, <laughs> we're running. Yes. We're running out of time. That is delightful. Thank he you. said, "Isn't that great? That is amazing." But it's beautiful. Uh, Gary and Jerry, we're running right out of time. So I'm going to come to Gary in a moment. Get a letter ready. Do a letter. I've got one. Come to Jerry. Talk to him about something. He says he's the Nigel Mansell of the harp world. Yes, but does I think he mean he just, Nigel Kennedy? Do you think? No, I think he means just the most famous person in, ah, the, right. in, the, in the harp world. I think I think he's a. Yes. He's, yeah. But uh, actually, Jerry, I didn't claim myself. Can to Jerry sit in oh, here yeah. and play the harp Jerry, while we're bet. talking? James, yeah. James, he, James used, used to play. Right out of time. James used to play the harp. Yeah. Oh. yeah it's true because Mike Mansell. Said, we're running out of time. He says that James Whaley's harp. Never mind. Come on. Not funny. I thought that was rather good. Now you must tell me how, <laughs> how do I quick letter while how you're talking about that from on your shoulder. On my shoulder. And, and, and the, okay, the nicest thing to do is not to pluck. Oh yes. But to to gliss. Will you listen, Catherine? Will you come back and play uh, another time for us on I, the show? Because oh, that? that was really lovely. Will you Thank do that? You. I'd love Keep to. him playing softly while I talk to Gary. Okay, because we're running right out of time. Okay, here's the man who uh, helps you out with all your legal problems, Gary Jacobs. No applause. Letter. Well. I've had a letter from somebody who that's, was concerned that's over there. That's fine. Concerned about the, chi the child support that's agency. Right in there quite but close. we should all be delighted to know that the government yeah. have decided to make a number of changes so that the child support agency ceases okay, to be fine. such a danger to men who have entered into settlements in the past with their spouses. Hopefully the wishes of the parties and the judges will now be taken note of. People power. It's good, isn't People it? Power, People power, absolutely. Power. One the more letter we might be able to get. One more letter. Yeah, one more oh, quickly over here, let's go. How are you doing, Jerry? Somebody was sued by yes. a book this. Club. Would you believe it? Isn't they didn't Gary pay much for their books and, and they yes. ignored the are summons we, and ended up the judgment against them. What? They think that was unreasonable. The point about it is if you are served with a summons by anybody in respect of anything, always go to court. Fine. OK. Hey, that's I've quite good. Talk about being cut off in your prime, oh, my good. God. Uh, by the way, God, I came all the way here to do that yes, from Bournemouth the, the, for the, the day. The, Would you believe uh, it? I'm on BMA. holiday. The, the, came back the, from my holiday the just BMA. for the day. Oh, thank you, Gary. Another letter. Do another letter. We've another got letter. Yeah. It's okay. We've got loads of letters. You finished. We've got somebody here with a complaint about James interrupting our contortionist. Wants to know why he did it. I don't know, but he was going to be a contortionist himself. Right. Yes, somebody here wants what, to know, can a solicitor Not defy a court wrong. order where they're told they must provide evidence? The answer is, solicitors must not defy court orders. They can be in contempt of court just the same way as the client. This person says that they have consulted four solicitors, two on, uh, legal Gary, insurers, and the Solicitors' Complaints Bureau, Bureau, and none of them know the answer. Oh, okay. The truth is, he hasn't been to real solicitors like me. Fine. Solicitors you must obey court that's orders. Fine, that's fine. Absolutely. Right. Over here, uh, just, I want to see this over here. Jerry, pay attention over here to Jerry. Where's my uh, this spot? Is the, this, is, Where's my excuse spot? Me? this is the wall of death, Jerry, you know over the here. Artists? The wall of oh, death. About the Tories. It's like about time. It's about time. It's about time. And, on. and like and also, can't do it and like also, this is where people's mouths over here. <laughs> Forget this is over here. Who's program? Over here. Okay. Anyway, um, is that, is that it? you what keep about on my spot. <laughs> Your spot. What about You're my You're doing spot? very well. That's what I want to know. What, what about, about the health service? Mm. Wonderful. What, what about the service? health service? We got rid of the, the health service. Have you seen the health service? CSA. I, I have seen the health service. This week. Right You've here. Very good. The Tories would all be better playing the harp. Anyway, follow me, guys. Three of you over here. 
This wall of death, little political comment here. Absolutely disgusting. We have no... Never mind about his spot. Over here. Wall of, wall of death over here. Why do we need this? There aren't enough fish in the sea. There aren't enough... The artists are here. Yeah. Free the fish. Uh, we must have run out of time now. I've got a date tonight. I'm out. Gary's even trying to play the harp. OK. Um, I'll see him and what about my spot? Play. No, what we've run out of time. Spot? There's no time for your spot. I'm not some... paranoid. I'm no, not paranoid. No, no, I, I, I know. I know. It's... Uh... I think it's... Thank you, Gary. Gary, yes, Gary, Gary seems to want you've to take heard. over your we've spot. Had, we've had I Gary's yes. time. Let him play. Let You Thank play you. us out. We'll... Uh, you play... It's good. It's good. Do you know what he's doing? Art? Yeah. You, you see how he's going. That Lindsay had nothing. Oh, cool. We're off out. Okay. We're come Absolutely on, then. Let's nothing. go. You play. We'll see. Come on. Anything that's beautiful? Okay. And he gets to go out with cooking. <coughs> Hi. Okay. He gets right, to go out with cooking. I play the harp. Really okay. Doesn't change. No change. Doesn't. Doesn't change. Here we are. And Gary is still talking. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Don't you think that was oh, dear. Oh, my fans, how are you? You know, Amazing. it's terrible. There are always so many people out here when I leave the studio that want my autograph. It's lovely to see you. Thank you so much for coming along. C come on. Cookie and I are going to hit the town, but listen, Hello, touch Jeff. me. Hello. Touch me if you wish. Please feel me. Feel me. That's lovely. Join us again next week. You're so cold. Isn't this nice to be appreciated by the general public? Thank you all very much for coming on and just waiting for me outside. Okay, fine. Well, I mean, we'll see. Take my time. Oh, okay. Okay. Have a nice